The first time I did a Slump Busters episode, I recommended Sea of Rust, Dawn, Embers of War, We Are Legion, A Canticle for Leibowitz, The Etched City, Empire Star, Blind Sight, Metro 2033, and The Diamond Age as great books to lift your reading spirits. Here's six more for you. More Than Human by Theodore Sturgeon, published in 1953. More Than Human is a story told in three parts and from multiple perspectives. I recommend More Than Human for an imaginative science fiction reading experience, not relying on any serious science. I recommend it as an incredible reading experience that examines human evolution, the mind, psychic power, a sense of community, and the individual. In More Than Human, Sturgeon introduces us to a number of young individuals coping with some superhuman abilities as well as struggling with identity and sense of belonging. Among these superhuman abilities are telekinesis, telepathy, and mind control. These lost and lonely wanderers will find each other and come together in what they will consider a new form of life, homo gestalt. Most likely to bust your reading slump is the fascinating and unique story and the strong, very easy to get lost in prose. Red Shirts by John Scalzi, published in 2012. If you love Star Trek and equally appreciate the Star Trek parody Galaxy Quest, Red Shirts will be right up your alley. Scalzi leans all the way into the mythos of the doomed, vulnerable, red shirt wearing low level crew member, usually an ensign, that form away team missions with Kirk or other senior Enterprise crew members. In Red Shirts, it's not the Enterprise, but instead it's the Intrepid. Instead of the Federation, it's the Universal Union. Much like those of us who are fans of Star Trek, expect that if anybody dies on the show, it's going to be somebody wearing a red shirt. The low-level crew members of the Intrepid similarly theorize as to why mortality rates are not in favor of the Ensigns relative to higher-ranking crew. Now, what if, like in the movie Galaxy Quest, there's some kind of art-imitating life, television show, connection, determining things? What if you read the book and find out? What if you're in a reading slump? What's Red Shirts going to do for you? It's going to make you laugh. And not just that the Red Shirts dying stuff, Red Shirts is a really fun space opera and an adventure that might just help to laugh you out of your reading slump. The Lathe of Heaven by Ursula Le Guin, published in 1971. Let me tell you about this phenomenal novella and tell me if you don't think this has the potential to bust a reading slump. Lathe is ideas fiction and it's one of the best. George has the ability to affect reality just by dreaming. Imagine this power, responsibility, torment. George can't take the torment and wants it to stop. He tries drugs and that just makes things worse for him. George ends up in a psychiatric clinic and meets a nefarious doctor who at first tries to help him and ends up using him. Imagine the temptation of using this reality altering dream power to affect positive change in the world. You could eliminate racism, dream of peace on earth, or just try to make lots of money. Now channel every genie fiction scenario where you get three wishes. In fact, you can even find similar trope in Le Guin's also excellent, The Left Hand of Darkness. Stated vaguely, any well-intentioned wish may result in an interpretation much more perilous than ideal. In Lathe, this happens time after time. The directions Le Guin takes the repercussions of George's inspired and manipulated dreams is captivating, and dare I say, slump-busting. The Legacy of Herot by Larry Niven, Jeremy Purnell, and Stephen Barnes, published in 1987. I had the honor of interviewing one of the authors of this novel, Stephen Barnes, and if you haven't listened to Barnes speaking about the writing process for Legacy of Herot, please check out one of these episodes. Now take a dose of Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift, M. Night Shyamalan's The Village, A Dash of Beowulf, and voila, Slump Buster. Herot is a really fun and thrilling novel. I'm going to start with the aliens. These are crocodilish aliens with superhuman strength. They are dangerous on land and sea, and they can get fast and furious when they push their nitrous-esque button, enabling bursts of super speed. Aliens, you say? Let's rewind a bit. The colonists have arrived on the alien planet Avalon after a hundred year exploration through space. Most of the time was spent in suspended animation. The aliens aren't the only challenge. Many of the colonists experience varying levels of cognitive decline as a result of the long hibernation. Part of the excitement in this survival story is the increasing level of threat that each alien, or Grendel as they're named, increases the more Grendels that the colonists kill. I won't spoil things and explain the why or the how. I'll let you figure that out while you're out there on Avalon, busting your slump. An Unkindness of Ghosts by Rivers Solomon, published in 2017. This is dystopia on a spaceship, and where I think it rips you out of your reading slump is the unexpected, not traditional space opera adventure. It's almost unbelievable that hate, 
Extreme hate and prejudice and suffering could exist in a future with advanced enough technology to build a generational starship. This, however, is the exact environment of the Matilda, a ship that has left a dying Earth. This ship is segregated by decks, and those with the darkest, blackest skin suffer the most and are relegated to the lowest decks. This is not Dreadbuster science fiction. It's not a bleakness buster. Trigger warnings all over the map. This is dirty, ugly, suffering, abuse, you name it. This is slavery in space and it will evoke all of your emotions. I'm not suggesting to read this to make yourself depressed, but I'm suggesting that the most profound art is that what makes you feel evokes strong emotions, good or bad. This novel delivers on this front and will be a huge diversion from whatever other slumpy titles that you'd most recently been saddled with. Main character Aster is an individual who is relegated to the lower decks. Without knowing the right label to use, I'll say Aster is a neurodivergent character who is not one to be filtered or censored. This can create challenges for Aster. Aster's character is very well drawn and the pacing of the story is a strong point. Solomon's prose is very enjoyable, and the story delivers a lot of suspense and mystery, most notably Aster's path to discovery surrounding her mother's past suicide. Aurora by Kim Stanley Robinson, published in 2015. If the Matilda is not your type of generational ship, maybe the ship will be. This is set at least 500 years in the future, with passengers on a heading toward Tau Ceti on a colonization mission. When the ship arrives on a moon that they intend to colonize, Aurora, it turns out to be a not ideal situation. Think killer alien bacteria. The colonists are left with some choices. The first choice is serious, but relatively easy. If you're on the planet and exposed to the bacteria, you ain't getting back on the ship. The larger choice, stay put and make every effort at terraforming and making a go of it on Aurora, or turn tail and head back to Earth. The plot, centered on that larger question, delivers all of the great stuff that comes with generation ship science fiction, great space opera and character conflicts, mutiny and dissension themes, ship-based AI becoming maybe self-aware, and some decent lip service on environmental themes both on the multi-generational trip as well as the climate conditions back on Earth. Thank you for watching. I'm Michael Everts, and this is Fit to be Read.